morning, church family. I am Beth Jones, and it is my pleasure to dive into God's Word with you for this last week of Video Sunday School. I look forward to actually seeing you next week. Please take a moment to pause this video and pray together as a family. Last week, we learned about Jesus walking on the water. Immediately after feeding the 5,000, Jesus sent his disciples across the sea while he went up on the mountain to pray by himself. After taking time to seek the presence of the Father, Jesus went to join the disciples by walking across the same big waves that were making it very difficult for the boat to cross the water. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the waves, they were terrified because they thought that he was a ghost. But Jesus calmed the disciples down and told them not to be afraid. Peter responded in faith by asking Jesus to invite him out onto the water with him. Jesus told Peter to come, and Peter was able to walk on the waves. But Peter quickly became distracted by the wind and waves and began to sink into the water. In fear, Peter cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus reached out his hand and took hold of Peter, reprimanding him for his doubt. When the disciples saw all that had happened, they worshipped Jesus, recognizing that Jesus is God present with us. This week, we are exploring Lesson 14, Jesus Defines Discipleship, and our focus passage is Mark 8, 27-38. Today's central truth is, follow the Messiah. As always, let's start by reading the passage together. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. For our lesson today, we will focus on three key parts of our passage. Jesus is the Messiah, verses 27 through 29. The Messiah is victorious through death, verses 30 through 33. The Messiah must be followed at great cost, verses 34 through 38. What did Peter mean when he said to Jesus, You are the Christ? The words Christ and Messiah both mean anointed one, someone set apart for God and empowered by God to do a special task. The prophets of the Old Testament spoke of a Messiah who would be both the Son of God and the Son of David, Savior and King. Many people at the time, and some today, thought that Jesus was one of the prophets returned from the dead. But the disciples knew that Jesus was more. 
When Peter said that Jesus is the Christ, he showed that God had revealed to him the truth. Jesus is God present with us. How was Jesus victorious even though he was going to die? Jesus is victorious because he died. The law of Moses taught that there must be a sacrifice in order for sins to be forgiven. But the sacrifices of the Old Testament were not enough. There was on they were only a shadow of the sacrifice God had planned. Jesus. Jesus was victorious as the perfect sacrifice to grant forgiveness of our sins. Jesus is also victorious because he defeated death. The disciples skipped over the part where Jesus said that he would rise again after three days. They were so focused on being upset that Jesus would die that they missed the important part. Jesus rose from the dead after three days to show that there is nothing he does not have authority over. Jesus is victorious over all sin and death. What does it mean to deny ourselves and take up our cross to follow Jesus? In order to truly follow Jesus, we have to live like he did. Since Jesus walked a path filled with rejection, suffering, and death, we must be willing to face the same. Since Jesus made himself humble, we must make ourselves low and empty. We must deny ourselves. This means not thinking of ourselves as the most important, not trusting ourselves, and not doing whatever we want. Instead, we should be full of Christ. Consider Him the most important person. Trust His way and do what pleases Him. Taking up our cross means living as though we are facing exactly what Jesus faced. Crucifixion was a humiliating, disrespecting way to die. But Jesus did it, so we have to also. However, there is good in dying to ourselves. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This doesn't mean that every believer will die of crucifixion, but that every believer must completely give their life over to Christ's control. Why is Jesus worth following? To answer this question, let's start by looking at the cost of not following Jesus. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 continues later to say, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The cost of not following Jesus is death. We know from the rest of Scripture that the death that comes from not following Jesus is eternal. It lasts forever. The cost of not following Jesus is very, very high. So, what's the cost from choosing to follow Christ? We must deny ourselves, putting Christ first in everything. We must face humiliation knowing that the ways of God are greater than the ways of the world. We must die to ourselves so that we may live with Christ forever. There is incredible joy in following Jesus, which far outweighs the cost. By this time, the disciples were convinced that Jesus was the Messiah, but they did not understand the Messiah's mission. Jesus confirmed that he was in fact the Messiah, but he explained that the Messiah would first be rejected and killed and three days later rise from the dead. Because this is who the Messiah is, this is also who his followers are. And those that follow him through rejection and death will also live with him forever. The good news of the gospel comes only through death. It comes through the death of Jesus the Christ, whose perfect sacrifice alone pays the penalty for sin. But it also comes through the deaths of all his followers, since no one can follow Jesus and himself at the same time. To 
To enjoy the blessings of being a follower, you must actually follow. And to follow, you must surrender your life to the control of Jesus. So, are you willing to deny yourself and take up your cross to follow Jesus?